morning and welcome to worship. Special welcome to those of you joining us on Facebook or who will be watching this later on YouTube. As we gather this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord work within us. As we gather, may we glorify the Lord. And as our hearts begin to worship, may we be blessed because we came. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, come, fill us to overflowing. Hear I, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, show us your power. We are a teacher, Holy Spirit. Lead us into all truth. Come. Spirit, be our healer. Heal us, Holy Spirit. Come. Come, Holy Spirit. Heal us and make us whole. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have told us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God of life, made new in Christ. You call your church to keep on rising from the dead. We remember before you the bold witness of your servant Nicholas von Zendendorf, through whom your spirit moved to draw men in Europe and the American colonies to faith and conversion of life. And we pray that we, like him, may rejoice to sing your praise, live your love and rest secure in the self-keeping of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Karen, could you read for us? A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Now at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with rejoicing, with thanksgivings, and with singing, with cymbals, harps, and, and lyres. The companies of the singers gathered together in the circuit around Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and from the villages of the Neophytes, also from Beth Gilgal, and from the region of Geba and Asmaveth. For the singers have built for themselves villages around Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people and the gates and the wall. Then I brought the leaders of Judah up onto the wall and appointed two great companies that gave thanks and went to procession. One went to the right on the wall to the dung gate. There they, the great sacrifices, there they offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll recite together the portion of Psalm 101 in the unison. I will, I will sing of royalty and of justice. To you, o Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is best. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. The process that of power shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. 
A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as it is among you, and that we may all be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Then we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Okay, I go for this time for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. A little while and you will no longer see me. And again a little while and you will see me. Then some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while and you will no longer see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. They said, What does he mean by this a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said, A little while and you no longer see me? And again, a little while and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. These uh, passages we just read are very interesting, and they share one uh, theme. And that theme is that in the world we live in, as uh, the writer of the Ecclesiastes says, there's a time for everything. There's a time for rejoicing, there's a time for crying. And what that means is that when we go through hard times, we should always be expectant and hopeful that one day things will change and our pain will turn into joy. I think that is the overarching theme. In the first reading from Nehemiah, these are, um, you, you have to read the whole book to, to see the context of, of, of this passage. The, it begins, the book of Nehemiah begins with news from Jerusalem uh, to Babylon where he was uh, as a captive. I think that by this time it was under the, uh, I just forgot the, the name of, of the, the rulers then, but the ones that had succeeded uh, 
the Babylonians. And he was uh, a servant in the king's palace. And as with all diaspora, they would try to get news from home. What is going on in Jerusalem? And the story begins with him hearing that all the walls were in ruins and Jerusalem had become truly a disgrace and things were really bad. And people in the diaspora, like Nehemiah and others, were very heartbroken by what had become of Jerusalem. So Nehemiah <coughs> asked the king for permission to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he gets a few people and he gets some more. He gets a permission from the king. In fact, the king appoints him governor uh, of Judea and uh, gives him some resources, the timber and all the things to eat that he would need. And he starts, he goes back and organizes people and they start rebuilding. And the enemies start threatening them and accusing them falsely that they want to rebel against the king the, the, that he was in the, the, you know that in the, in that history the people would conquer lands and subjugate other people so uh, at, at this point uh, Judea was like a province of the larger empire that had conquered them. And so the, the people there were appointees, the, the king, why am I forgetting <laughs> the, the, the name of the king and the empire that was in power then. Anyway, uh, but people started fighting this project of rebuilding. To the extent that they had, some of them had to have a, like um, a building tool and a weapon, uh, guarding and working at the same time. It was very hard. So this is the dedication of the finished work that had gone through a lot of struggle and the pain. The pain beginning with the 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 the, the disgrace, the shame and the pain of seeing what had happened to, to Jerusalem and now seeing the new Jerusalem rebuilt, that joy. So it, it is that context. And, and Jesus, in this story, is talking about the, the same idea. He's talking to his disciples. He's about to be killed, but he's saying, your joy your pain will turn into joy is referring to the resurrection but in a bigger picture i think he's also referring to the fact that he will ascend into heaven and then one day he will come back to 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 gather the believers so and, and that theme applies even to us in our daily lives that the pain of today cannot be compared with what God can do and what God will do. That, uh, and if we, 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 ref we look at our own lives, we've gone through periods of great sadness, and yet God has turned things around and we have had some joy. So th th that is really, I think, the reading, this reading, are readings of assurance that when we are facing difficulties and hard times, that we should always remember that that's not the end of the story, that there is always uh, something new that God will do. I don't know why they chose this word for this particular um, holy man, uh, Nicholas. Ludwig von Zenzendorf. I, uh, I don't remember reading about him before, so I will read about him with you so we can learn about who he is and his impact and why 
these readings were assigned on his feast day. Remember, we sometimes use this book called Holy Women, Holy Men, and um, uh, today, May 10th, uh, the church remembers this man, Nicholas. Nicholas van Zenzendorf, 1700 to 1760, was a count of the Holy Roman Empire who always had more interest in religious matters than in affairs of court. Following studies at the Pietist center of hell, he developed his own theology of the heart, which placed great emphasis on a close personal relationship with the suffering savior. This heart religion was not just inner emotion, however, but was to result in a life totally devoted to the Savior. All of life becomes a liturgy, said Zinzendorf, and even the most mundane task can be an act of worship. Or as a champion of the underdog, he granted asylum to Czech Protestant exile. Following a unifying experience on August 13, 1727, in the settlement of Hanhart on his estate, the old church of the Unitas, Unitas Fratra, or Bohemian Brethren, was reborn and developed a rich liturgical and devotional life. This Moravian church, as it came to be called, launched pioneer mission work, first in the Caribbean and then around the world. Zinzendorf himself became a bishop and devoted his personal fortune to furthering the work of the church. He was an early advocate of ecumenism, and in America, he attempted to bring Protestant denominations together in the Pennsylvania Synod. He was not a systematic, a systematic theologian, but produced numerous theological writings, widely read in Germany. In addition to these, he was a prolific hymn writer, and many of his hymn texts remain in use today in the Moravian Church and beyond. His view of the church is summed up in his stanza, Christian hearts in love united, seek alone in Jesus Christ. Has he not your love excited? Then let love inspire each breast. Members on our head depending, lights reflecting him, our sun, Brethren, his commands attending, we in him, our Lord, are one. This is from the Moravian Book of Worship. So, I see where these teachings are. This is a man who advocated for heart religion. There is, as you know, controversy among uh, Christians as to whether uh, emotionalism, <laughs> what they call people who, uh, who, who don't like uh, heart religion, accuse people who uh, add emotion uh, to their spirituality as emotionalists. But uh, 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 somebody I admire, Nicky Gamble, who wrote the uh, Alpha Course, or, or perfected the Alpha Course, says, any love affair is a hard thing. And if God, if, if Christianity or religion really is about loving God and loving another, you, you, you don't love with your hand. <laughs> Nicky Gamble jokes and say, you can't tell your wife or your girlfriend, 
I love you with my head. <laughs> you love them with your heart. So if Christianity is a love religion, it is a love of Christ. And it has emotions. It, 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 and we human beings are emotional people. When we are uh, we, we, when good things happen, we rejoice and jump and laugh. When th things, bad things are happening, we are sad and we cry. And so that's the nature of it. So I think, and I, what it seems to me that Nicholas is saying is that our faith should embrace the whole life of Christ. His suffering, but also his trial. Uh, and I agree totally with you. Uh, and uh, so for us, in our own context, uh, it is okay to cry when things are not okay. But it is okay also to rejoice and laugh and jump when things are good and sing praises to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the example of Thank you for your grace that sustains us through difficult times and good times. How we pray that when we go through difficult times, we can look forward to times to the day when our pain, our sadness will turn into joy. Because you are the God of joy. And you desire for us that we might have life in its fullness and rejoice in your goodness. Thank you, Lord. How we pray even now that those going through hardship of illness or whatever other hardship, Lord, we look forward to the day when you break through and bring joy to their lives. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. With that, uh, let us stand before God, those for whom we offer our prayers, those for whom these days, this day is not a day of rejoicing, but a day of longing, praying that God in his good time will bring joy to their hearts. We remember and we bring before your God our brother Randy. We bring before you our sister Debbie. We bring before you Ray, Mark, Joe, Joanne, Mark, Barbara, Sophia, Jane, Megan, Mandy, Janet. Christian, Ron, Terry, Marianne, Rob, Beverly, Deborah, Charlie, Colin, Pam, Tom, Liz, Barb, Thomas, Mary Ellen, Troy, Montana, Wayne, Star, Vern, Charlotte, Sharon, Janet, Terry, Jen, Ray, Jeffrey, Ken and Brandy, <coughs> Amos, and and all those who have asked for our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God in you, we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick injured or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear, Hear us, O Lord, Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance, and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, knowledge of your will, 
and an awareness of your presence. Hear yes, us, so Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear, Hear us, so Lord of life. life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear, Hear us, so Lord of life. life. Grant to the dying peace and the holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Hear yes, us, O Lord, Lord. Lord. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our parish, in our community, in our nation, and in our world. Hear yes, us, O Lord, Lord. Lord. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have you declared your power among the peoples. peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Hear, Hear us and make us whole. Almighty God, giver mm. of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At this point, I invite you to take a moment of silence as you reflect on those issues that you wish to bring before the Lord, who is our healer, who hears our cry, who desires that we may be well and whole. Bring that before the Lord in prayer and anticipation for breakthrough. Trusting your power to turn mourning into joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Manifest your power, God. Let the pain and suffering of so many turn into joy. Because you are able more than able to do amazingly more than we ask or even imagine. Thank you. We bless you in your name. In Jesus' name. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sit 
teaching our Lord Jesus Christ has taken in his breath. Grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all sickness of body and spirit. Heal and restore it to all the sisters. And grant you this day. We should enable you to continue loving and suffering all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Mighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in you, to whom all things in heaven and on earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Maybe see. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Spiritual food, blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. As we have goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that may become a spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. celebrate this Holy Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for the blessings of our lives, for the promise to turn things around, that the suffering of this moment shall not be compared with the glory that shall be revealed, but more so in intercession on behalf of those who are hurting and longing for better days and better things in their lives they may have the grace to persevere as they look forward to God's coming among them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, why chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. 
holy and gracious Father, in infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when I had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memory of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We call it his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. The unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has told us, we are going to pray. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
that I have spread together. Gracious Father, we give, give you praise, praise and thanks for this holy communion of the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the pledge of our redemption. And we pray that you may bring us forgiveness of our sins, strengthen our weakness, and everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may God the Father bless you, God the Son give you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guide your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.